Hello, hello, everyone. I will uh, give a second to let anyone jump on who's coming on here. But uh, once you uh, once you're live, let me know where you're coming to us from. And just to give you a little uh, preview of what to expect here on tonight's call. Um, I'm going to be around for an hour. So eight to nine, I'll stick around. Um, we'll start off. I'll go through. If you have questions, you can you can start throwing them in the um, in the chat and I can start working through them. But I'll start off by going through the curriculum for the Drone to 1K program. So if you don't know or if you haven't really seen the emails, uh, we have a program called Drone to 1K. It's named after the podcast we started. So on the podcast, we interview um, successful drone entrepreneurs. And we had this podcast going for probably almost two years now. Uh, we've just finished season three. Uh, we're most of the way recorded with season four, maybe halfway. And uh, we realized people needed a lot of help and wanted help starting the actual drone business part of it. So we had previously done courses on some drone skills, like cinematography, photography, roof inspections. Um, but people were getting the skills and then still struggling uh, to start a business. So we thought, well, you know what? We want to create a, a program that starts from the very beginning of starting a business and gets people to where they're scaling and growing the business. So we spent, I don't know, probably six months to a year um, putting this program together, flying around the country, linking up with a bunch of different drone experts in all these different areas and packaging a course. Uh, and then we taught it live the first time to a test group. We worked with them, um, saw success, then we launched it again. And then people joined that program uh, or that round of it. And, um, you know, it went well for those folks as well. So this is the third time we've opened it up. And it is the last time we're going to open it up before we make some changes. Um, we're going to add stuff. We're actually going to split it up into multiple individual courses. And then you can buy it all as a bundle or you can buy the individual courses. But we're going to add more to them. So it'll be a little bit more expensive next time around. So there's a good chance to get it. So if you do get in now, um, you'll have access to all that stuff we do in the future as well. So on today's call, I'm going to go through. Um, so normally the course, normally the program is like $1,000. And people are like, oh, wow, one course, a thousand bucks. That's why we're going to split it up because it's really more than one course kind of put together. Because most of our courses are probably between two hours and four hours of like video content and program. This course is 18 to 20 hours. We're adding more content now. So it'll be a little over 20 hours of um, lesson content. So it's literally like five times longer than any other course we have um, because there's just so much involved in getting the business going and growing it. So there's different phases and different pieces. So we wanted to um, split it up. So let's say you already had a business and you just wanted to do the very end of it. Um, let's say you had a successful business. You know, we've had people that are like, they're in, they're already a six figure drone business and um, they're like, Oh, Hey, but I'd love to get the Google ads part so I could grow my business even more and scale that. So it didn't make sense for them to buy the whole program, but they would have just bought that kind of thing. So, um, so we're going to split it up so you can have the option to do that, but those individual pieces will be more, you know, will be more expensive than if, you know, if you get it all together, obviously we're going to discount it. So, um, so I'll walk you through what the course material is again, throw your questions in there. And then um, I have, two current drone to one case students that have very kindly offered to um, be on the call tonight. So I see them in the waiting room here. There's Joey and Eric. Um, the last time I sent out like a little, Hey, give me an update on how everything's going. Um, they had some cool stuff to report back. So, and then I was like, Hey, well, do you want to come on the, um, sorry, I'm going to open up this water here. I'm like, Hey, do you guys want to come on this, uh, this call I'm doing for people who are thinking about getting in and they were nice enough to be like, sure. So, um, so I can bring them on in a minute. Uh, but we'll go ahead and dive in to um, the course curriculum here. I'll share my screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, but if you have any questions, again, throw them in there and then we'll start getting to them as soon as I'm done. Diving into all of the uh, curriculum working through it. And I'll show you what's inside. I'll like get in there and I'll, you know, I'll show you the videos and everything too. All right. I'm going to figure out how to actually share my screen here. Hold on. Share screen application. This one. Share. Cool. All right. Can you guys see that? Uh, I think so. And it's over here on this screen. Okay. Um, first, I'll, I see a question here, so I'll, I'll get into it. So I like the idea of someone 
if someone has a partner seven, but wants specific courses towards real estate, cinematography, um, setting up drone business or even mapping. Yeah. So mapping is our next planned course. Um, again, we're, we've got to figure out the best way to do it. Um, but we have some great instructors that we've linked up with now that have a lot of experience in, um, mapping. So we want to, um, provide that to you all. Cause that's another skill set that you can add to your drone business. Um, so, all right, let's dive in here a little bit. So obviously, you know, there's a little, so there's, it's split up into content blocks. Uh, Dave, so this, yeah, we'll save this. I mean, so the deal for the drone to 1k program ends tonight that we're doing for like this round. Um, but I'm sure you can still find this and rewatch it if you want. Um, but you know, but you have the information, but that deal will be over. Um, all right. So there's, there's four content blocks really. So the first, and this is how we're probably going to split up the, these into the future into four to five different courses. So the first block is kind of like a welcome, get ready type of thing. Right. So, or actually I guess there's five different content blocks. So we're going to add, we'll, we'll add a lot more to this in the future with, um, um, some more kind of before you dive into your business type of stuff, but this is just, you know, notes, we have a bunch of office hours in here. So previously everyone who's, oh man, it says I'm locked. Hold on. Preview. As, and, okay. Well, all right. Let's see if I can get in here. All right. So there's my ugly mug. We'll fast forward before down below that. All right. So here are all the office hours that we have previously held. So we had them in November, December. We had them a lot of them. And these are about an hour each. And these are all still in here. So you can go through and watch all of these to see um, what oh, that's, I'm just not gonna leave it in my face. That's bad. We'll leave it here. Um, you can watch to see what everyone else asked and as they were going through business, what they were working on, um, questions they had as they're working through it. So um, it's really cool to be able to, this is one of the biggest ways people learned. And this is one of the things that uh, students liked the most was getting in here, talking to each other, being like, oh, this works. And I think more than anything, people enjoyed kind of like the accountability and motivation of it, because it's easy if you're just by yourself to let things get stale and kind of forget and put things aside. I mean, I even do that with my business. But um, when you have something where you can like, okay, cool, I'm going to get on this call and you hear people saying, yeah, I'm getting out there. I'm trying this. This is working. This is not working. Actually, I'm going to take this approach or this angle. It kind of fires you up to be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to get back out there. I'm going to get after it because really taking action is like one of the biggest key pieces of um, making this work. Obviously, you can have the knowledge, but if you have knowledge, you don't do anything with it. It's, you know, it's useless. So, um, all right. So you have the office hours. That's just there from last time. And when we do office hours this time, uh, so everybody who gets in during this round will have access to um, more office hours. And then we'll include the, the students that are already in there as well who want to jump on office hours. They'll have it too. Um, but we're going to do them every other week for three months. So I guess that's roughly seven calls probably that will do. So that'll hopefully keep you going, especially at the beginning when you dive in. It'll keep you motivated to keep going and come in, give your check-ins. Um, I'll try to get some drone to one K instructors on there. I'll be on there um, and keep you moving forward and keep you with a plan to, uh, to move through everything. All right. So um, let me give you a little bit like, you know, Hey, here's what to expect. Welcome. Here's how to do the course. I'm going to talk about assessing your current skills and ability because that's going to determine what you do next, right? Either you're going to go, um, you know, if you want to be the drone pilot and the business owner, um, you need to have drone skills and business skills, right? So there's kind of two pieces to, to the puzzle. Um, a lot of our successful drone businesses actually end up, they end up getting a lot of work and they end up just hiring out to other drone pods because they end up getting, um, you know, if they're in the position where they're getting a lot of work. So you could, if you wanted to just do the business side and just hire out drone pilots. Um, uh, but most people are doing this because they want to fly their drone and they, they enjoy that and it's fun for them. So, um, this is kind of helping you determine with your skill level, what's the best approach for you right now, what to do first, what to get into next. So that's this. Um, right now in the course, actually, you get um, discounts on other um, Drone Launch Academy courses. We're, we can't do it in in reverse if you already have the course. But if you want to get into some other kind of skill building courses, you can do this. In the future, this is going to be in a separate section outside of the course. Um, so that's another maybe good reason to get in this time around. Uh, and again, we also give you discounts on like drones and drone accessories. So these are only available to Drone 1K students. So these are below retail. So um, DJI has a thing where you're 
their vendors are only allowed to market products at a certain price. They can't go below that listed to the public, but you can sell the product for whatever price you want. It just can't be advertised as that price. So we can give you these prices only because you're basically behind a paywall and these aren't advertised to the public. So we essentially just price them at whatever our vendor pricing is usually about, it's not, it's not anything crazy, five to 10% off because you know, when you get shipping and credit card fees and all that stuff, it eats away at some of the, um, the margin, but uh, we just offer it to you at whatever it costs us. But still, if you're going to buy, um, you know, Mavic Air 2 Flymore combo, normally that's almost a thousand bucks. You can say, you know, $85 on it. Um, Mavic Pro, you'll save 150 ish, 120. So, you know, the cost of this program is 600 this, you know, this time around. So if, even if you're going to buy a couple things, this might save you a few hundred dollars, depending on what you're getting. Um, and we can get other equipment in here too. If there's something else you want that you don't see in here, um, we have like a giant list. We just put the most popular stuff in here. Um, all right. And then some of the stuff people like to skip over this, this part, like, oh, mindset, that's, you know, that's boring. I don't need that. But honestly, this is a really important part because if you don't stick with it and you don't have the right mindset going into any business, you're probably going to just quit and um, not understand that when you hit a roadblock, it's normal and how to work through it versus just immediately getting frustrated and stopping. Right. So it's kind of important. And when you talk about choosing your niche. Um, so this was actually this is a recording from when we did the beta group because um, it was, you know, it was good. And we walked through a lot of all the different niches you can get into. And we're going to be adding to this and we'll probably record it uh, in, a, in a studio version because now we're adding more construction and mapping content to this course. So we'll, we're gonna redo this video and it'll be split out into multiple videos here. But, um, but here the content's essentially the same, but it's just a little PowerPoint um, with our video live call video right there right now. Um, and then if you're literally starting from scratch, like you have nothing, we talk through how to um, think about a name and logo, right? So when you're choosing a business name, what to think about, because a lot of people they'll go, oh, you know what? Tommy's photo aerial photography, or they'll go, you know, Jones aerial portraits, but then they realize, oh, I want to do mapping or oh, actually I want to do inspections or this or that. And now they're like, oh, well, my name doesn't make any sense anymore. So we just talked through, hey, here are common ways you can, um, you know, combine certain, you know, your last name and this, or if you don't know, if you want to do this type of work and you're sure about that, you can do this. Sometimes it's good to be specific with your name because it helps your branding, especially if you want to go niche down. But, um, you know, we just help you think through the right name to pick, how to actually check to see if your business name is available. So the domain, we help you look um, through trademark searches, all the different things you'd wanna look through before you buy a name and you buy a domain and all this stuff and you realize, oh crap, somebody's got that trademark, now I can't use it anymore and you have to start over. So just frustrating things that we've been through um, that uh, we wanna help you avoid, right? And then, you know, how to find the domain, purchase it. Um, we walk through how to create a logo. So we give you options for, Hey, here are some good, we have good logo designers that we can refer out to you that are not super expensive if you want. I think it's like usually 50 bucks, 50 or $70. If you want to have someone else do it, we give you those contacts. Um, we don't make any money off of that, just referring you out. Uh, or we show you how to put it together if you want in something like Canva um, or a similar platform. If you want to make it yourself and do it on the free version. Personally, I'd rather just pay someone else to do it because, you know, I don't waste my time with that, but it's up to you. All right, then the next section of the course, then we get into, um, so this is a, this is all about being findable. So the first content block, right, is all about being findable. That's laying your foundation for um, getting your business digitally set up and being able to, when someone's searching for a drone business or what you do and they're in your area, they will find you. So that's the whole purpose of all this stuff. So we go through, um, if you don't know how to set up, you know, the ideal way to set up your Facebook page, if you're um, a drone service business, Again, setting up your Instagram account, if you're a drone service business, how to connect it to everything. So that way when you post on social media, it just posts everywhere. And we have like screen recordings and everything to walk you through that. We walk through YouTube setup and you think, okay, well, how hard is it to set up YouTube? You just like log in with your Google account, right? Um, but we go through, hey, here are drone businesses that are really crushing it on YouTube. And here's how they set it up. Here's what their, their um, banner images look like. Here's how they utilize um, the, um, what are the channels? I think they're called or playlists, how they utilize playlists, how they name their videos, all this stuff. So kind of like a YouTube uh, setup tutorial type of thing. And the same thing for Vimeo. This one's really short, but we talk about when to use Vimeo, why to set it up. And then very important, Google My Business, how to set up Google My Business, why it matters. We talk about um, how it's going to really boost your rankings in Google and all the reasons and 
we go through the full setup, talk about Google My Business posts, why they're important. We show you a lot of examples from other drone businesses that are doing this well and why it's working. This is actually Randall Productions. He was, um, I think he was season or uh, episode 10, season three on the podcast. So a lot of these are podcast guests that we're using as examples. Uh, and then we talk about reviews, easy way to get reviews. All right. And then we talk about uh, websites. So like a lot of people just throw websites up. They have no purpose. They don't know why they're doing stuff. They don't know. They're just like, okay, I'll just have a website with some pictures, right? But we talk about how to have a purposeful website, what you need to know. So this is kind of the principles, you know, um, of a good drone service website, right? You have to showcase your work, work and educate. We show you how to do that, how to establish your professional competency, all that, making it mobile friendly. And then we get into, all right, now that you know about this, I'll tell you about search engine optimization. This is essentially all the stuff that's going to make you get found on Google. This is Steve. He did all the SEO for Drone Launch Academy website. So he teaches you all the stuff about key, some keyword research. We try to keep it fairly simple and you're not going to go like crazy, but we give you tools on how to know what things people are searching for and then how to plug those into your website in the right way so that you'll show up for words that people are searching for about drones in your area, right? So um, we have that. Then we get into, literally I go click by click on building your website. And we do this in Squarespace. I think this is a really easy builder. We talk all about how to build your website. We talk about um, crafting your story. I'll walk you through formats for how to craft your story. Templates like, hey, here's how you think through it. Do this part, this part, this part. How to set up a contact page, you get a quote page. Um, all these things, what video to film, what to say in the video how to make this look because we're going to use this later in the ads section. And when we run ads, we're going to run ads to this page. So um, literally just, I mean, every single thing from font and color options, probably way too detailed on this. Uh, and then we get into building a portfolio, right? If you want someone to find you and you have nothing for them to find, right? No work. It's not good. So uh, what should you put in your portfolio? Um, what a bad portfolio looks like. Um, how, where to put your content so that it gets fine. We get, we go into a lot of this. We talk about how to optimize um, the videos and the pictures that you're putting up so that they get found and talk about metadata and um, tags and all that good stuff. Um, any questions so far? Again, you can throw that over there in the chat and um, I'll get to them as I, I'll, I'll look through. I think we have one here. Uh, DJI Assistant 2 won't download to Max using Catalina. Chris. I don't know about that. I can try to follow up with you. Can you send us an email to support and uh, we can try to look into it, but I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Okay. We'll keep pressing on. Uh, and then we're going to dive into getting business ready. So this is a lot of stuff around um, the back end of your business. So setting up a legal entity, whoop, my camera show. All right. Setting up a legal entity, um, how to register, like, do you know, Hey, should I be an LLC or an S corporation or what? And then when I do it, what do I need to actually set up to make it legitimate, right? Oh, I need a um, operating agreement. Oh, do you recommend watching everything first once then going back through it? Or do you want to progress as long as you watch it? So this is set up in a way to almost where you can, I say this at the beginning of the course, you could do the very beginning if you want, but you could also skip ahead to uh, this section. So this is... Um, more of like the getting landing drone clients section, because a lot of what you're going to do here, you can do concurrently with the business setup because, you know, it takes time to build relationships and, you know, reach out to leads and all that stuff. Right. So you can do kind of both of them at the same time, if that makes sense in parallel. Um, but if you, you're more than welcome to just go straight through it. Um, but you'll need to, um, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt to do both at the same time. Uh, all right, so that's the business entity setup. You know, you're going to need an EIN number and an operating agreement. And we give you templates um, where you should have templates in there for um, having a um, operating agreement. And we show you where you can get some templates. Um, this is my this is taught by my CPA that uh, for my business. Um, and we actually have new videos that we're going to be putting in here. We we went to South Carolina with AJ and recorded all this in a studio. And so we'll be uploading those here shortly, but it's the same content. It just looks a little nicer. Then we're talking about bookkeeping um, wave. It's a free accounting software. And so um, we, we, it's really good though. And it's a way to create uh, professional invoices. And since we walk all through how to set up your accounting software, how to send professional invoices, how to take credit card payments, um, all that good stuff, how to look at your profit and loss statement so you can actually run your business like a business owner. Um, so that's good. We have stuff on taxes and what you need to know when you're, um, 
looking at your taxes and what you need to hold back for taxes, how to pay taxes, so don't get in trouble with the IRS. Then we dive into drone insurance. Um, Skywatch from uh, skywatch.ai. These folks, uh, they are a drone insurance company. So they talk a lot about um, everything you need to know about drone insurance, the types of policies, um, which types of drone insurance you'd need, um, pricing, how to get discounts on it, um, how to meet client demand. So when a client wants certain things, a lot of times construction clients want minimum coverage and they need to be added to the um, insurance certificate. So how to do that, um, how to meet their requirements. Skywatch is really good about working with you about that. And then they also have a lot of data about the things that they've learned from all of the, the flight data that they've collected through their platform. So they gave some tips on the most common ways people crash their drone and have insurance claims and kind of how to avoid that. So then we dive, that's that's pretty much all your business setup stuff. And then, oh man, that's a great thumbnail. Let's do a different one. And then we, we dive into, these are where all the six figure drone business owners come into play. So um, we have right now one, two, three six figure drone business owners in here that talk about landing and working with clients. And we're about to add two more. Um, we recorded most of those and we're filming next week. Um, half of those videos are edited. And so we'll be putting those into the course over the next probably week or two. Um, but uh, so here's talking about Cody. So he's got a company that did a lot of video production stuff at first. He was on the podcast as well. And he transitioned more to inspection works. Now he does inspections for retail centers and for cell phone towers. And he's got like national contracts doing cool stuff. So he talked about how he got started. He has a background in sales. So talks about something called the free to paid strategy, um, how to identify warm leads, um, you know, different industries that are good to reach out to. He talks about reaching out to how to, totally cold leads, how to follow up, um, different things he did with trading services, going to networking events, active outreach, driving for dollars, this thing called the Wikiac method, um, outreach methods. He does mock phone calls, um, mock emails, talks about how he does his pricing, um, agreements, proposals, and some example deliverables that he does. Uh, so that's that. And then another six-figure drone business owner, Jeremiah Oswald, he does all real estate videos. So he is in Lexington, Kentucky. He makes a lot. Let me see if I can find Jeremiah here. There he is. Um, and he talks about exactly how he gets clients, how he started his business. The main thing he does is he gives training for um, he gives training for associations of realtors, and um, he focuses on not selling to them, but giving them helpful information. So, giving them a presentation on hey, um, drone laws, or you could change it if you want. But he's had a lot of success with hey, let me teach you about how to use drones for real estate because I know a lot of you want to do it. But in the presentation. Um, he talks about all the different things that go into it, how you get to get um, airspace authorization, your part 107, all these things. Um, and some of them might want to go do that themselves. And now you look like someone that has provided value. And even if we've heard stories of agents going out, you think, oh, I'm now I'm arming my competition. But really, we've heard stories. They'll go out, they get the part 107, they do some of it themselves. And then later, they're like, I don't want to bother with this. They're just going to hire someone. Well, who are they going to think of? You. But a lot of them, when they hear this presentation, they just go straight to that and go, oh, I don't want to do this myself, but hey, I know this guy does it. So Jeremiah gives a cool presentation. He takes a drone out, lets them fly, um, shows them how he checks airspace and how he does all this stuff and talks about the penalties for um, hiring an unlicensed operator and how you can get in trouble. And um, and at the end, he says, hey, and here's some videos I've done. Here's some work I do. If you ever want help, give me a call. Like not a big pitch, just that at the end. And um, that he said he's never left without getting uh, drone clients. And he's taught this to several people just that are his friends and it's all worked for them. So, and he teaches it to you and he goes through how he works with real estate agents, how he does video. And then he goes through that presentation step-by-step. Step. He shows you everything he literally does, what he shows them on the screen, um, talks about literally how he would do it. Um, so you can just copy that whole thing and do that same presentation. And then he talks about his pricing models and then, um, what he does for his final product delivery. He walks through um, a sample of those uh, videos that he does for himself. All right, then our third um, six-figure drone business business owner is Dominic Wilkerson. Um, he's in the Seattle, <laughs> he's in, a, in the Seattle, Washington area. And um, he does real estate as well. So again, if you want real estate, these two guys are awesome. Uh, they both have six-figure businesses doing that. But he is Mr. Non-Salesman. So he's all about building relationships. He's got most of his clients through Instagram, actually. So he talks about how he gets on Instagram, contacts people, build relationships with them and starts landing jobs. 
And he's, I think he said he's got 70 or $80,000 a year from Instagram clients alone. Um, so he talks about why does Instagram work? Then he goes, what to show on your Instagram? And literally we have, you know, screen share stuff of him. Um, if it'll load talking about, man, he's always got these bug eyes in these uh, thumbnails, but he talks about what he does um, on his Instagram account and why he's doing it, how he interacts with people. Um, so his whole thing is be patient, not push. So if you don't want to be a sales, very salesy, you can go the, the um, Dominic Wilkerson route. And then we have two more people coming that are a little bit more forward sales approach, if you will, that will be uploading. Those are getting clients in construction mapping uh, arena and then getting clients in the thermal inspections arena. Um, so that's going to be Root Patel, who is on the podcast in season three. And then a guy, Jeff Carrillo, he's actually going to be on season four. And then we got Google ads. So this is with Dan Henley. This is the guy who runs all of my paid ads. He's also run ads for a bunch of other drone companies in the UK and some in the US. Um, and he ran ads for our test drone company for all. We tested it for three months. We spent several thousand dollars on ads, testing it out to make sure they were profitable for us um, before we kind of released it. But what this is, he teaches you all about Google ads. And again, we're gonna be adding to this section too. When we, we're going to split it again, this out is going to be a separate course um, and, it's, and we're going to be filming it and um, adding some updates to it because Google's updating something this summer. So we're going to update this portion of the course to make sure that it's updated. Um, and Dan's going to be responsible for keeping this one always up to date. And then we're going to add Facebook ads and some other stuff. But again, this will be a whole separate course. Um, but if you, the people who get in this and previous students will have access to all of these courses when we split them up. But Talk about how Google ads works, how he structures it. And, you know, we try to keep it simple. We're not trying to turn you into to like a, a guru necessarily. Try to keep it simple, just what you need to know, understanding how ads work, how to run ads, you know, and, and what makes a good ad, right? So we talk about campaign structures, how to do your location stuff, um, bidding strategies, talk about how to set up a live campaign. So we teach you all about Google ads so you know about them. And then we get into... Um, and then we get into where we're going to teach you um, how to import a file. So we paid, like I said, a couple thousand dollars testing some ads and you can actually download all those ads in a file and then upload them into your Google account through this thing called Google ads editor. And then you can turn, um, you can take those ads and you can modify them for your business. So your location, your name, if you want to do different types of services, things like that, and then you can turn them on. Um, and then we have a class on helping you optimize. So this is about an hour long, um, optimize all these ads. And again, we're going to be re-recording these for the, when we split out the course, but all the content is here on how to optimize your ads, um, to make sure that they're working. You're killing off the bad ones and pushing more budgets to the good ones and all that stuff. So it's a way to kind of generate leads again, just digitally without having to, you know, go out there all the time. It's good to do both, right? Go out and do in-person stuff and build relationships, but also it's nice to have this going on the internet side too, right? Cause it's kind of um, both sides at once. Um, but you have to have, again, good stuff on your content, uh, on your website, good offer, all the other stuff we teach you in order for these ads to really be effective and work. So some people will be like, hey, I ran ads and they didn't work. Well, I look at their website. And I was like, well, th you didn't do any of the other stuff. Like you didn't set up the website. Like we teach you how to set it up. So of course it's not gonna work the same if you don't set it up the same, right? This looks different, it's different messaging. It's, it's not the same. So, um, so you just follow the process. This is what we've tested, um, to work. Right. Uh, and then a little bonus section, people kept asking us, well, how do I get Lance authorization? How do I get airspace author? So we recorded some stuff on that and, uh, put it in here with some screen recordings, talking about how to do that, how to do the unlocking with your DJI drone when you're in a locked area, um, how to find out which airports are Lance enabled and, um, how to get access at non Lance enabled airports. So we have screenshots and, um, walk you through all that and then what wide area authorizations are and how to get those. So just help you with kind of your drone flying when you're going out to do jobs. Okay. So that's really it. I mean, we try to cover everything top to bottom and make it a real like business in a box type of situation. Um, so hopefully we accomplish that. I'm going to turn that off here. I'm going to go get some, to some questions and then we're going to bring on our, um, guests. I said, I know Eric's been waiting patiently. Thank you for bearing with me, Eric, and sitting there. And uh, I see Joey on here too. I don't think his camera's on yet, but um, hopefully he's ready to go here in a minute. Oh, there he is. Look at that, Joey. All right. Um, but uh, I'll get them on a sec. All right. I think I mentioned this one. Do you recommend watching everything first once? Then I mean, you could. I mean, it's 20 hours worth of content. So that'd be a lot to watch and then go back through. But if you have the time, 
that would give you a good overview of how everything works and you can kind of go back through and work through it. Um, so sure, that'd be great. Or you can start at the very beginning and then also watch videos on uh, with Cody Retlick where he's talking about getting clients and kind of as you go and do the relationship building parts of it and identifying the warm leads and all that stuff. And in the background, start setting up your business and getting your LLC done and setting up your bookkeeping. But a lot of times it depends. People want to, they, they feel like I need to get everything set up first before I go get clients. And that's fine. But you know, you could do all this setup stuff, but it's kind of a lot of work to do before you ever get a paying client. So sometimes you can feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing all this work. I haven't got any clients yet because the client part is over here. So sometimes it's good to say, hey, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to work on getting some clients. And then as soon as you get a paying client, you go, okay, crap, now I got to get all this stuff together. You can go back and um, set some of that stuff up that you need in order to, you know, do business with that client. So you can do it a couple different ways. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in here. Hello, Ed. Do we keep track of the success rate of drone to one K students? Yeah, we try to. I mean, we have a Facebook group uh, where people post how they're doing, how everything's going. If they have issues, you know, getting feedback from the group, we try to chime in and help um, as we can. Or, you know, they'll email us. Um, they all have my email um, and they can email support too, which is just goes to George and we work through them. So, um, you know, we don't literally email every single person that's ever taken the course and, and be like, hey, where are you? You know, because some people they take they sign up and they're like, oh, I got busy or this or that. You know, everybody else has life stuff going on. Um, we try to stay involved um, in what people are doing and help them as they need it. So we know when people are posting, hey, I had this good thing happen or um, things like that. So how can we, how can one get that training program with Google ads? Well, you could just sign up for the course if you wanted to, because um, obviously it comes with it. And then we'll have that separate course available that you'll have access to all of those four maybe five courses eventually. Um, or if you don't need it now and you don't want it now, you could wait, I don't know, several months until we split it all out and you could just buy that one um, alone. I mean, it'll be, it's not going to be like, oh, $600 divided by, you know, oh, it's this port, you know, they're going to be more expensive to buy individually. Um, but uh, if you, if that's literally the only one you want, yeah, you can, you can buy that when we split them out. Can some of these sections be applied to Canada? Yeah, the Google Ads one for sure. I mean, all the client stuff, yes. Um, the only one that I would say is unique to the US would be um, the accounting, uh, the tax stuff and the business entity stuff. That's all specific to the United States, like LLCs. I'm sure it's similar in Canada, but it would be different, you know, a little bit different terminology. Um, but I think literally everything else is applicable. Google ads, website, SEO works the same. I mean, Google doesn't change for Canadian SEO, um, portfolio stuff, the Lance where we help people getting airspace authorization. I mean, that would change obviously because it's a little bit different up there because um, you don't have the FAA. So how much discretionary cost do you have to think about? Oh, this is a good question between getting, making a website, getting our license and drone accessories. I already have a drone. Um, so you shouldn't need much in the way of drone accessories. You may want some extra batteries if you're doing a lot of flying. Again, we can give you some discounts on batteries, like 10%. So the batteries, and we that's shipping is included with those prices. So if batteries, 100 bucks, get it for 90 or so, that, you know, including shipping. But uh, making a website, again, you could pay, usually if you're going to pay someone to make a website, the cheapest you'd get it on something like Fiverr for a really baseline website, probably several hundred dollars for the website. Um, so again, I mean, the program costs $600 and we essentially just hand you the website. We teach you how to make it. So one thing we're actually going to work on for the next round of this right now, we, we show you step-by-step step how to do it. Um, I'm trying to work with Wix and Squarespace so we can get it where we can just give you the website we already have done and teach you how to, um, modify it to make it your own. So you don't have to worry about creating the pages and doing the, you know, setting up all the styles and all that stuff. You just take it. Put your pictures in there, put your logo in there, change it for your story, but you have the structure already done. Um, so if you're going to do that, that would have been a couple hundred bucks, but now it's just really your time. Um, way, we try to make this as low cost to you outside of the course as possible. So the, the software we use for accounting is free. Um, let's see what you mentioned. Website, Squarespace, I think will charge you $16 a month for hosting maybe 30 or 25, but it's somewhere in the $20 a month range for website hosting. So no matter what website you do, you have, I guess you could do 
Um, there's a free version of Wix. We talk about Wix too, but they have like their own, all their branding on there. I think that looks a little cheap. So um, I wouldn't recommend that, but you can do that. It's a free option for, for making the website, at least at first. Um, getting your license. If you're in the US, you got to do your part 107. So that's a $160 to take the test. Although I have heard some people say they found it for 90 through certain organizations. Like um, if you're go through PSI, so you could check that out. Uh, and again, you'd have a half, if you don't have your 107 already, you have half off to our part 107 course. If you join this course, uh, if you're like, I really don't want to pay for anything. Um, you know, there's free study tools out there. It'd probably take you a little longer. Um, and it's not as like structured. The, the people who buy our course, the ones that are like, let's just hand it to me on a silver platter. You can go through the whole thing in two days uh, if you want and pass the test. Um, but if you're trying to be like super penny pincher, you can, you can go study on your own or there's, you know, we have like eBooks and flashcards that you could buy individually for a lot cheaper too. If you, if you like that and you don't care about practice tests and videos on. So that's your license. Drone accessories. I said, yeah, you might need some batteries, but really not much. If you want to, like you said, oh, you can handle time investments. Yeah. If you, if you have the time to put in, we teach you how to do it all. Uh, the only one I can think of really is probably paying for a website. That's like 20 bucks a month. And then if you want to do Google ads, obviously you have to pay money for the ads cost some money. Um, but hopefully it's set up in a way where, um, those leads are converting for you and you're making money on those jobs. If you're not at a point yet where you're already doing drone jobs, I would hold off on running Google ads. They're best as a, at like fuel to the fire. Once you have drone jobs, if that makes sense, you can turn them on and off. Um, because you know, you do need to put some money to, Hey, test which ads are working in my area for my setup, for what I have. Everybody, you know, everything's a little unique. We got it to work for us and what we set up, but, um, you know, it might take tweaking to get it to work exactly with your, what you have set up in your business. All right. Um, I'm going to bring on, I'll start to answer some of these, but I'm going to bring on Joey and Eric, if they're ready, um, to kind of give some of their thoughts here. So let me, let me bring them in. So here's Joey. Here's Eric. I'm gonna see if I can do like this. Oh, look at that. that big. Well, I don't know. Let me, let me, let me see if I can get everybody some equal share here. Oh, that's better. All right, cool. All right, Joey. Uh, and Eric, thanks for joining us. Um, they are two drone to 1k, uh, alumni, I guess you will, if you will. Um, but they had some cool stuff to report back. Joe, I think, weren't you the one who actually won our, uh, our like aerial video contest that we ran or was that somebody else? Yeah, that was me. That was me. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. You had some awesome. Was it the one of like the mountains with the yellow leaves and stuff? It was. Yeah. It was. That, was yeah. that was really cool. So anyways. Thanks, man. Joey's out there winning contests. I didn't pick those. That was voted on by uh, Instagram. So it was like a fair fight. You know, you won fair and scribe. wasn't given favorites because you're in drone one okay? uh, And then Eric, you and I have talked before, I think when you first signed up, right? Yep. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so um, first number that signed up, got a, uh, got a 30 minute uh, session with you and I got that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we ran for. Cool. Um, so I'll, we can talk some of the, about some of these. I don't know about, Oh, so does this move? Very cool. Um, as far as, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if you heard me answer this one, but what would you guys say as far as, are there any other costs that I'm forgetting when you guys were starting your, like doing your drone businesses that you had to shell out or decided to, to spend? Well, mine, was, mine was for, um, depends on the type of job you're going to end up getting. Like recently I've got a, uh, um, a job for a series of um, cell tower inspections. Um, and to do that, you have to have yeah. right now only, um, uh, and I'm getting feedback. So let's fix that. I'm sorry. You know what? Let me put my headphones in. I was used to just doing this got it. by myself here. If I put in headphones, I think it'll, uh, it'll cut down on the feedback. I, um, yeah. So I had to have the right drone for it. Um, and then you have to have, if you're going to be out flying all day long, you have to have the right number of batteries and a charging system, a mobile charging system. So you can keep cycling batteries through. So I had to uh, invest in a um, second drone and some a bunch of batteries for that. So there's there's things like that to think of. But that's if you're going to be flying all day long. What drone did you get, Eric? I had to get a uh, it's a Phantom Four um, Pro V2. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's a popular one for inspections. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think that's that's really good to consider. But as far as but outside the drone and the accessories, are there other things? Um, I guess one thing I did forget, sorry, is if you're going to set up your LLC, that there are some filing fees in every state. And we talk about states that are super expensive and some alternatives, 
as opposed to filing an LLC um, if you're in an expensive state. I think Massachusetts and California are the two expensive ones. And Eric, where, aren't you in Massachusetts no, or I'm close to New Hampshire? Hampshire? New Hampshire. Oh, that's right. Okay. Close. Um, so that's another thing I thought about. And those are, <laughs> what's that? I'm on the right side of that border. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so Joey, what about you? Did you experience any other um, unexpected expenditures or other things outside of just the drone and accessories? Yeah, well, the LLC cost was going to be the one I was going to mention. So you took care of that, but I, Colorado's not too bad. I think it was like maybe $75 or $80. I used a, a website called Zen uh, Zen Business, I think it's called. Okay, cool. um, that's a good one for just basic startups, basic LLC costs, nothing fancy. So I recommend that. Cool. Um, and then, you know, I chose to kind of focus on real estate getting into it as a beginner and i think sometimes people don't realize like with with most real estate videos whether you're doing commercial real estate or res, residential real estate the drone is actually less than probably 30 or 40 percent of the video so you know most houses apartment complexes whatever they're going to want interior shots so your drone can't really help you there so you have to invest in a decent dslr camera for interiors um, a stabilizer like a Ronin is, which, which is what I use. So you can get away. I mean, I bought my DSLR camera. It's a Panasonic GH4, um, that takes 4k and I got three for 300 bucks on Craigslist. Cool. Um, and you know, people have asked me, Oh, is that the Sony AS? I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's a $300 Panasonic camera. That's like 10 years old. So if you do your research, you can find stuff at a, at a decent budget. Um, they can get you by with what you need to, to at least get started. Yep. Cool. Um, no, I think that's a good point too. Cause, um, you know, like Jeremiah in the course and, um, the two, the two guys you do real estate, Jeremiah and Dominic, um, they both do some groundwork as well, because if you're going to focus on real estate, right? Like you said, you're rarely going to get hired just to be the guy who takes the drone photos and videos because they're going to want someone like, I don't want to go find a drone guy and a ground guy and a this guy and a that guy. So if you're going to go the real estate route and you're going to specialize in videos, you're going to need to learn to, to do both anyways. Cause if you're gonna learn how to edit, editing aerial footage is the same as editing the footage on the ground. Right. So, um, but there are even, I think $300 is a really good, a good deal. You got, there's even cheaper ways too, like Jeremiah, the guy in the course, he started off, he just started off using a uh, Osmo, the little Osmo pocket, you know, the little, yep. little guys that have a gimbal on it. And he's like, it's not the best, but he's like, but it worked fine. You know, like I walked through the house, try to be real smooth, you know? Um, so you can always start on the lower end and then once you get more business, then you can kind of upgrade your gear and things like that too. So, um, all right. Another question, too, David, sorry. Um, right, go ahead, go ahead. Editing video. If you do plan on doing your own editing, probably going to have to pay for either, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro membership or Final Cut Pro. And yeah. one is a monthly and the other is like a pay for it all and and that's it. Um, yeah. So depending on, on which one you choose, you got to kind of plan for that too. Yes, that's true. So depending on what jobs you're doing, there's software costs. So even in the mapping, on the mapping side of it, Joey. Um, so if you're going to do editing, like if, I don't know if you guys have taken aerial video A to Z, but Alex Harris is a really good instructor, teaches all that stuff. He uses Premiere Pro, which I think is around the twenty to thirty dollars a month range for the software, and I believe that comes. Or not, uh, that might come with Photoshop, or maybe that's an add-on. Either way, um, so there's that, or you can do. I use um, Final Cut Pro, and I do my editing. I don't do a ton of it anymore, but I think that's three hundred bucks, like one-time payment, and you just have it forever. Um, so that's an option, but there is um, DaVinci Resolve, which is a free video editing software. I know a lot of people like that. I haven't personally used it. But a lot of people have talked about that, especially that are trying to not not spend money. So there there are like always free some free workarounds too, right? Then on the mapping side of it, if you're doing a lot of mapping work, you're going to want something like Pix4D or Drone Deploy. Um, but again, there are other workarounds like Maps Made Easy, um, uh, which they have like you can do the automated flight in Drone Deploy for free. That's the free version. That's the free part of Drone Deploy, and then you can take all the photos. And you can upload it to Maps Made Easy for free because Maps Made Easy charges you for the drone flight automation, but not for the map processing. So you kind of just like, you know, work around the free versions of both of them. So there are ways to do it, but then you get some limitations. Real estate up. But, um, but yeah, so that's that's uh, some, some other costs that you might run into if you're doing mapping. But typically mapping work pays 
um, decently when you get it. So if you are getting that work consistently, it could be worth it. All right. Um, another good question would be good to keep track of all your expenses from the very beginning. I'm, Joe, I remember you were emailing me about this a while ago, right? Uh, you had, were you the one who had some questions about uh, an invoice or something like that? Someone had yeah. to pay you Venmo, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, but um, but I would say yes, absolutely. And I would not even so your. I mean, if you have a CPA, great. You can deduct the cost of the drone one K course, your drone, your batteries, all the software. If you drive to a client site, keep track of how many miles you drove. Like all of these things are write offs. We talk about these in the course to help you mac minimize your taxes. Um, but yes, definitely keep track of all of your costs from the moment you start a business because you can re you know, offset all of your income that you're bringing in by uh, any of these business expenses. And we talk about how to log all those in the course. Um, and at first, again, you can use a CPA, but if you are if you don't have anything super complicated, sometimes it's best to use something like QuickBooks, um, self-employed, it's probably cheaper than hiring a CPA, but maybe one's easier. Um, someone says, is the original Mavic Air still viable drone for business? I would say, I have one in here over there. Um, I would say, yeah. My only, my biggest beef with the original Mavic Air is, is the range doesn't go super far, especially if there's like other like uh, like towers and antennas and stuff in the area giving you interference. Um, one time I was doing like a commercial real estate job and there's these huge warehouses and I had to like get photographs from each corner and I couldn't even get it. The warehouses were huge, but I couldn't even get it to the corner of the warehouse. So I had to like take a picture at one corner, drive down to the other side of the building and put it back up. Um, but I don't know. What are your th what are y'all's thoughts? I don't know if you've ever used a Mavic Air, Joey or Eric. Uh, I'm not, I, I know what it is, but I haven't had any experience with them. Yeah. I haven't used the Mavic Air myself, but I know plenty of people that do. And I see their photos and, and videos. Sorry, my dog's like, oh, you're <laughs> good. You're good. Off the couch in the background. Um, I, I, the, I mean, I can't really tell the difference between a Mavic Air's footage and a Mavic Pro 2, for example, but yeah, I know plenty of people that still use them. Yeah, and especially, well, depending on where the footage is going to be, but if it's on like ends up on YouTube or something, I mean, that footage all kind of gets downgraded anyways to that. Um, I have a lens that came my drone. I just can't understand how to take them off my Mavic 2 Zoom. Um, Mavic 2 Zoom shouldn't have different lenses. You might like a um, like an ND filter. Maybe. Yeah, the filters kind of snap, snap on. At least they do with the Mavic Air 2. Um, all right, let's see what else. So Mark says, I assume the type of drone will dictate the direction of your drone business somewhat. I mean, I would say certain jobs require at least a minimum level of some drones. So most cinematography, real estate, you know, the, the kind of more artistic stuff you can get away with, I would say like a Mavic Air and up. Um, and then once you get more into inspection, sometimes you need that Phantom 4 Pro because it's got the mechanical shutter and it's got, or if you're doing mapping jobs or inspection, it's got a bigger sensor and the mechanical shutter. So, um, boop, boop. <laughs> good point. Exp oh man, my camera keeps dying on me. Hold on. Expensing a part of your residence. If you work at our home. Yes. I would just say on this one, you just want to be careful because the IRS is picky about that area is only used for your, for your workspace. But yes, if you have like a workspace at your home, you can take a home office deduction um, and that might be different. I guess it sounds like Canada has similar rules, but, um, but yeah, you can definitely, definitely do that to offset some more expenses. Um, so you guys keep sending questions if you want. I think I'll, uh, I'll ask some questions of Eric and Joey now. Um, so Eric, tell us about, I haven't talked to you in a while, honestly, um, since you started. So tell give us an update of like what, what's been going on with your drone business or maybe just introduce yourself and give everybody an introduce like introduction to what you do, who you are. Okay, um, my uh, my company is called Guardian Imaging Solutions, um, and that comes from um, my prior career. I've been a, in law enforcement for 25 years, and at the tail end of that, and looking for a retirement job, and drones came into the picture, and I'm hooked ever since. Um, just have to convince my wife that it's a uh, viable viable option. Um, we're still working on that one, but. <laughs> Um, mostly I started out, um, I started out trying to do real estate, um, in my area. Um, I, I hear on the podcast and hear the stories of others that do very well in the real estate market. Um, in my area, I've done some, I still do some, but it's, I can't seem to get enough business there. It seems like everybody in this area has, like you said, a few minutes ago, they have the interior photographer 
that also has bought a drone and fly got their license and does the mm -hmm. air stuff too. Um, and it's been a very difficult market. I have a couple of clients that give me business regularly, but not enough to support anything. Um, the biggest find that I've had, um, the one David, you and I have talked about is that uh, last summer, um, I actually made the contact through um, a lot of my, most of my big business has been through watching um, Facebook commercial drone pilot groups, part 107. There's three or four big ones. Um, and just watching for postings of, hey, looking for a drone pilot in this area. And my area is like um, eastern, northeastern New England. Um, and this was a posting that said, hey, looking for a pilot in the main area. I'm, I'm right on the main border. Um, it turns out that what it was was um, inspection work for wind towers, wind turbines, big, great, big, huge windmills. Um, so I ended up spending uh, pretty close to two and a half weeks um, living out of my camper up in northern Maine in uh, moose country, um, flying a drone that they provided, a Matrice 210 RTK. Um, with a custom uh, LiDAR module on it that they taught me how to use. Um, and I spent two weeks flying an automated flight pattern around uh, wind towers um, doing inspections. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, That's an expensive get up if you got with that. Those, those LiDAR sensors can be hundreds yeah, of thousands. Very expensive. A lot of, lot of technology and where I was just learning it, it there was a, there was a, a learning curve. Um, I was much more productive getting them done towards the end of the time I was up there than I was at the uh, the beginning. Um, but it's it was it was a great experience, and I was hoping to do it this summer. But I just again this summer, but I just learned that uh, contract went to a different company. But I'm still I still have wind towers on my resume now, so that I can uh, market that out there. Um, yeah, that's so awesome. That's cool on and, the website too. <laughs> yeah, and and hopefully you know you can. We're, we're putting some more stuff out about inspection work too. So hopefully you can, if you wanted to, you know, you could be the one to go get some of these contracts yourself. I mean, flying for someone else is good. And that's actually sound for, for a lot of this work. That's how some of these guys started. I know like Root Patel on his po podcast, he's talking about, he originally started, especially for utility stuff, flying for another company. And then that other company screwed up. And then he, now he knew the contact and he ended up um, becoming like the prime contractor on it. And then he went out and got a bunch more work like that. Now he hires drone pilots to help him with his contract. So it can, you know, it yep. can build from there into, yeah. you know, owning the yeah. business. Working with Biggest things I have found in getting into this stuff is network, network, network. Yep. Um, make friends with people, send people messages. Use I use um, LinkedIn a lot. I make connections yep. and just so that the people, your name is a part of, gets into conversations and stuff and your name is known so that when you, something comes up for a job, they go, oh yeah, that's, that's Eric. I've, I'm, maybe you didn't meet him, but at least uh, made a contact. So the name rings, rings a bell in the back of their head. Um, yep. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for the update. Um, Joey, what about you? Uh, I, I, we, again, we talked, um, well, We've uh, we've emailed back and forth early on, but I haven't gotten a real update from you in a while. But it sounds like you've been doing a little bit of um, commercial real estate work, too, right? Yeah, that's right. So I um, definitely still a newbie, like maybe been at this for about nine months to a, to a year. But I, you know, I have a full time job <clears throat> and this has just been something that I kind of wanted to start on the side. But with the eventual goal of doing full time. Um, how I kind of got started is I come a little bit from a background of photography. So I already kind of knew how to edit photos. I knew kind of the basics of photography and, and video isn't terribly different. It's different, but if you have a background in photography, it helps. So um, I live in Denver, tons of construction going on in Denver all the time. Real estate is crazy out here. Um, and I just, everywhere you drive, there's cranes and new buildings and new apartment buildings coming up. So I kind of thought, Hey, you know, if there was ever an opportunity to kind of get into, you know, get involved with this business, get my feet in commercial real estate might be a good way to go. So, um, I had a contact, a buddy whose uncle worked for a, a really large commercial real estate firm with properties all over the country. And I knew that they had one or two here in Denver and I had met the guy, um, a, a while back. So I figured, you know, what if I just reached out to him, got his permission to go and shoot 
the apartment complex because it's a really nice one right next to downtown Denver, you know, pool, amenities, all that. And I thought if I can get the okay to go shoot it, I'll just go shoot it. I'll screw up a bunch, but I'll, I'll fail and I'll figure out as I go along. And if I can get something halfway decent together, I'll send it to him and who knows to see what happens and maybe they'll like it. So that's what I did. I just I reached out to him. He gave me the okay. He let the property man, he introduced me to the property manager. I was like, I'm just going to be coming out here for the next two or three weeks and just shooting every now and then. And I put together a video and it sucked, <laughs> but I got some feedback from some other like Facebook groups and things and got some pointers, got it to a point where I was pretty comfortable with it. And then I sent it to them and they actually liked it. And they said, you know, we have some feedback. We have some things we'd like to like maybe change or edit, but overall we really like it and we'd like to buy it from you. And um, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was really just trying to get in with, with a, a company with lots of buildings mm -hmm. around. And so, um, you know, I made the changes they suggested, went out and reshot a few things and got it looking really good. And they ended up purchasing the video. And then I'll admit, I thought I was like made at that point. I was like, oh, they're going to ha have me out to go do all these properties all over the country. I mean, fly didn't play out like that. Didn't hear from them for like three months. Um, and then they asked me to come down recently and shoot two properties in Florida. And then a couple weeks later, they hit me up and asked me to go take some drone photos of another property here in Denver. So it's like, it's been incremental, but um, it's helped me to build up a portfolio, which is really the most important thing when you're starting out. It's just like you said, having a body of work to show. So yeah. like Eric said, networking is huge, but also building, taking any excuse, doing free work to build up some work to show people is really important. Yeah. Again, Joe, I don't know if you've watched the videos with uh, Cody in the course yet, but um, it's pretty funny. You sound, It sounds exactly like what he was talking about. And he's like, that's what he did. Um, it's just at the first, sometimes the best way to get your foot in the door is just offer to shoot some stuff for free. And half the times people pay for it. He's talking about one time he was flying and flying for another client. And he saw, I think it was like a mini golf course or some, he likes golf a lot, but this is mini golf. I'm sure it's not the same world, but he just took some like took some pictures and some quick video and he and he sent them i think he sent them the pictures and said hey i was flying for another client i got some cool shots of your mini golf course just thought you might like to have them here you go you know he reached out and uh they're like oh this is awesome can we buy these off you he's like sure and they're like oh can you actually do some video for us too and he's like well i was out there i got some video already anyway so he's like i already had the video it's like then they paid me like 400 dollars for the video i already had um so a lot of times that can just end up happening um end up happening like that but uh, so that's cool. They they offered you a couple other things um, on the commercial side um, in other work. But yeah, I think really it is like like Eric's saying, right? It's just very relationship driven. Right? The more people you know, and the more you put yourself out there, the more it happens. And I like to tell people it's almost like Minesweeper, where you don't know like who it is the person that you're going to meet that's going to like really connect you with tons of other work. But if you don't go out there and click on the boxes, so to speak, you know, and try to open up the different doors, you never know which one's going to hit and you're never going to get it. Because, you know, especially these guys in real estate, Eric, I know you said it can be frustrating, especially if if it seems like everybody's already got their person. Um, but, you know, it's like you really have to connect with like five or six people that are just going to give you all of their listings, you know, and then you have like as much business as you can handle. Um, but it takes time to like work through everybody and find those people who are going to mesh with you and like your work and value marketing, all other stuff. Right. So that's on the real estate side. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's cool. So there's a, um, all right, hold on a couple questions here. Let's get to them and I won't take too much of y'all's time. Cause I know I said we'd be here for about an hour, but someone's between the Mavic two Mavic pro two and the Autel Evo two pro. Would you recommend one of the over for real estate purposes? Um, so Alex did a little side-by-side -side comparison. He likes the Mavic Pro 2 better. Alex is our cinematography instructor. Um, but I think either are fine. Uh, I mean, I just like DJI's interface the best most of the time, but I don't know if either of you have any opinion on this, but. I have the Mavic Pro 2 and, and if anyone wants to go check out my stuff, my, my, in, let me know what you think. Vicarious Media is the name of my company. V Y C A R I O U S Vicarious Media. But I'll put it. I've been Say it again, Joey. Vicarious Media, V Y C A R I O U S. It's like vicarious, but with a Y instead of an I. Yep. But I love that drone. It's small enough to travel with, takes great 4K footage. Um, I've crashed it a few times. It's pretty durable. 
I, I, I don't, I don't know much about that other model that that person um, mentioned, to be honest. Yeah. The Autel Evo, it's kind of like an, an alternative, similar drone to like specs wise to the, um, I'm just putting y'all's names in here. I would also add to like a lot of these questions, understandably, because I was this exact same way. Like, I think there's such thing as analysis paralysis by analysis or whatever that is where you just analysis paralysis get caught up in what website server to use Wix or Squarespace, what drone is best. I mean, at the end of the day, like it's so easy to get stalled by all those little decisions. But at the end of the day, those aren't going to matter as much as you just getting out and getting started messing up and learning from messing up. So just choose one, choose what you can afford, do enough research to know that you can get by on it, pick a pick Squarespace or Wix or whatever. But I would say that where this course comes the most in handy for me is like helping me get through those times where I'm stuck on things that I realize this isn't that important for me to be taking this much time on, like just go do it. And yep. it's also great to just hear from all these other guys who are doing it. Um, and just know that it's it's normal to get stuck. It's normal to have two or three months where you don't get any phone calls. And the, the course gives you actionable things to work on each month. So if you are having a lull in business or calls, like, you know, David's put a ton of work into this course to like give you homework after each section, little baby steps. So you, you at least feel like you're making progress, even if like a bunch of money isn't rolling in, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's really good advice. And you know, I don't know. I feel like a lot of online courses these days are spun up like, hey, listen to this business model, zero work, lots of money, huh? all this rah, rah. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, that's just not true. That doesn't exist. There's not a business where money just comes in with no work, like ever. It doesn't exist. So, you know, we're not trying to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, hey, drones are the easiest way to make money. Nothing's the easy way to make money. I think it's a fun way to make money, right? Because people love flying drones and you can't make money. But everyone I know who has a successful drone business, it takes time, it takes effort and patience, right? Because then a lot of it is building trust with the right people, being there to get these certain contacts and you being available when, or being the person that's thought of when that person needs that thing, right? So it's how do you position yourself to do that, right? So you have to kind of build your skills at the same time that you're building your you build your drone skills at the same time you're building your business and networking and um, capabilities, right? So, you know, they say your network is your net worth, right? The people, uh, again, the other people I know who are able to just kind of snap their fingers and get drone work are like, oh yeah, I was a mortgage broker for 30 years and I know like 75 real estate agents, I can just pick up the phone and have instant business, right? Because they already have all the trust from all of those people. And again, this is just a real estate example. And, you know, Jeff Carrillo, who's doing a lot of, um, Oh yeah. Sorry. I've had the links for the course. I would have put them in there. Sorry. Hold on. I see people doing that. Here's the one for the, uh, if you just want to do the one payment and if you want to split it up over four months, here's that one. So this, yeah, this is a good, this should be good till the end of the night. I guess that one's still going through. Um, uh -oh. I guess Facebook, it didn't Oh, There we go. And then here's the payment plan one. Okay, cool. If you want the course, you know, those are good for the next three hours. You can um, click on either of those. But, uh, but yeah, I was going to say Jeff Carrillo, a guy who does the thermography, he's a thermographer. You know, he, he tells his story. I don't know if you, I guess his podcast episode isn't out yet. It'll be out on season four, but he talks about um, like, yeah, he was doing stuff. He, he started off on the cinematography route and he was getting jobs with like car dealerships and some other folks, but he's just like, he's like, that just wasn't me. Um, he just, you know, he didn't, I don't know. He just feel like this is not really my zone. I want to do something a little more, I guess, data driven or more objective and not so like artistically driven. And I hear a lot of people say that, like, I want to do something else. So he, <laughs> he just took the plunge and talked to his wife and dropped uh, $40,000 on a Matrice with an XT like thermal camera. And he, yeah. just, he just like pushed all the chips in the middle of the table and was like, I can't, I'm not recommending this, but he's like, and I just put it on like a zero interest credit card that I had 12 months to pay off. And I thought he's like, my, he's like, my, my plan was I'm going to get enough work, uh, in the next 12 months to pay this off, or I'll sell the equipment at the end. And I could probably get like 60% of my money back, um, selling it as used equipment. He's like, so really I'm out like, what is 40% of 40? Like I'm out like 15 grand ish, give or take, you know? So he's like, it's worth a shot. 
<laughs> um, I know. And he's like, I didn't have a lot of money, but I, I honestly, again, not recommending this approach. He's like, but I did. And he's like, honestly, there's something about, um, you know, there's no motivation, like knowing that you like have to like have to make it happen and get it done. Um, so he's like, I was cold calling, I was emailing and Jeff's not like a super, I mean, if you know, him, he's a pretty like reserved guy, not like super out there. Um, he's just very chill. Like, like, yeah, okay, cool. He likes to fish, you know? Um, but he, he's like, I was cold calling people. I was going to conferences. I was doing everything. And 12 months later, boom, that all that was paid off. He had become a thermographer. He had networked with engineers. He had just like done what he had to do to do it. And so he paid that off. And that was maybe two or three years ago. And this last year he cleared over or he, his business made over $200,000 doing thermography work. And I think he still does a couple other things, but, um, like in the, he, I think he says he likes doing the car dealership things though. So he still, still does some of those, but, um, but yeah, but again, it's not like he bought that drone and within a month, everybody's calling him. You know what I mean? It was work. He's like, I showed up at marketing events. I, you know, got to join these organizations, got a list of all the emails from all these different companies that I could potentially work with. And I sent an email to every single one of them introducing myself. And I went on LinkedIn and I found everybody, you know, that had, I was an engineer in central Florida that worked on commercial buildings and I connected with them and I showed them what I was doing. You know what I mean? So like he's do, taking these steps, but it's, it's like, Hey, if you knew, if I took these steps, this works, right. Then that's what we want people to know. Like it's possible. It just takes continued effort and the right, the right plan basically. So, um, anyways, I won't keep everybody on here for super long. Uh, if you want to get in drone to 1k, knock yourself out. We got the discount stuff there. If you're like, Drone stuff sounds fun. I don't really want to make a business out of it. No hard feelings. Uh, it's all the same to me, but we want to help and support people that are in the course. Um, so if you get in, um, you know, we'll do our best to do that. So Joey and Eric, thanks so much for coming on here, guys, and giving us an hour of your uh, of your night here on a Thursday night, going into a holiday weekend. No um, all right. Thanks again, guys. And uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks.